Welcome to the Mankind Cave. Welcome to Kayfabe Connection, your home for facts, rumors, knowledge, trivia, and everything you know and hope to know about pro wrestling. Hit the subscribe button. It is right down here. If you want to listen to something different other than dun, 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 generic metal music, dun, welcome to Q1 to 4 dudes talking about wrestling, the same topics, the same companies over and over. If you want to listen to something different, hit the subscribe button. Hey, this is Adam, a.k.a. Edge, a.k.a. the Rated R Superstar, a.k.a. Dwight from Haven, a.k.a. Uh, what was my name in Bending the Rules? I can't remember, but you're listening to the k Connection. This is Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks, and you're listening to the Kayfabe Connection, your home for facts, rumors, knowledge, trivia, and everything you know or hope to know about pro wrestling. It's just too sweet. Welcome to the Mankind Cave. Welcome to another episode of Kayfabe Connection, your home for facts, rumors, knowledge, trivia, and everything you know and hope to know about pro wrestling. Get it? So (laughs) this episode and every episode, we are specifically, exclusively going to talk about pro wrestling. Another little wink and nod there. Lots to cover. There's so much to get into. Uh, New Japan Road took place today, July 20th. Impact Slammiversary took place this past weekend, Saturday. Um, Fight for the Fallen was last week on TNT for free, which I thought was a great move on their part, giving people just some stuff until All Out comes um, in early September. So, so much to get into. So without further ado... Let's get to the plugs at the letter K, F-E-B, Connection on Twitter. Subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. Uh, Follow Kayfabe Connection on Twitter. That's the most active source of communication. Uh, Subscribe on YouTube. As I said at the beginning of the podcast, hit the damn subscribe button, man, and hit the bell. There's too many garbage Kevin's wrestling show. Let's talk about Swamp Ninjas and you know, (laughs) fake eyeball matches, and let's talk about Seth Rollins puking. No. Follow a wrestling podcast. If you're a wrestling fan, follow a wrestling podcast. One that covers more than one company. That's here. That's me. That's Kayfabe Connection. Subscribe on YouTube. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and give a follow on Instagram. One word, Kayfabe Connection. Definitely uh, like to post on there as far as giving everybody a heads up when I'm recording. I'll usually send like a sneak peek shot. You can't see right now, but I got the little circle vanity mirror, the mic, everything's all set up. So I'll send like a behind the scenes little, you know, snapshot of the Mankind Cave and like, oh, hey, you know, recording tonight, giving you guys an update. Um, and so, yeah, that's all the places you can follow us. Facebook sucks. Facebook is poison. <laughs> toxic i refuse to start a facebook account Ugh. no no thanks go follow kevin's wrestling show or bodyslam.net or whoever else the fuck is on <laughs> facebook it won't be k-fame connection so plugs out of the way let's get to what we're here for professional wrestling right new japan road cork and hall today july 20th nothing really to cover as far as the rest of the card it was your basic filler tag matches getting everybody in everybody getting their reps in nothing really notable to be honest as far as that goes but the main event though did have something nice and juicy so if you're living under a rock Evil is the double champion. He is the IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion Uh, bullet club is evil I, everyone saying he's the leader of Bullet Club, that still remains to be seen because there's a certain switchblade that hasn't been able to make it to Japan due to the C word that we won't bring up on YouTube. <laughs> but it remains to be seen. But uh, the main event of New Japan Road, uh, you should still check it out, even if you just zip to the main event. 
uh, it was Lij, so Bushi, Hiromu, and Naitu taking on Bullet Club members Evil Dick Togo and Ishimori. So this seems to be like Evil's click, and it made me think. In you know, before I get into the match, uh, th- there's some things that are happening. There was a, a a big return that happened at Impact. Spoiler alert: If you haven't seen Slammiversary, and again, if you're living under a rock. Spoiler alert, the Good Brothers, uh, I I almost said closed out the show. Someone else said, I'll get to that when I cover Slammiversary. But um, they signed a two-year deal, uh, according to them, the source, (laughs) those those guys, the Good Brothers. They signed with Impact for two years. So uh, they signed a deal. And the good thing about it is that they will also be able to work New Japan and Impact has already agreed that they'll work around New Japan dates as well. So it's only a matter of time uh, that the Good Brothers make their return to Japan. And they did their Countdown to Fucktown episode on Talking Shop. It was a two-hour shoot, basically. I'll cover that when we get into Slammiversary. Uh, but sticking with New Japan, something that I can definitely see happening, just the tones and they, they keep doing these teases of, who's going to join this, who's going to defect. I honestly think when Gallows and Machine Gun return to Japan, that they're going to form like the OG Bullet Club. And probably it'll have, you know, of course it'll have the Good Brothers, but they'll also reunite with uh, G.O.D. and um, Bad Luck Fale. So I could definitely see, I could, I could almost see like a subset of Bullet Club uh, groups. I could see an evil bullet club. I could see an OG bullet club and then maybe even a switchblade bullet club. And hell, maybe he work, starts recruiting people. I, I know the lazy argument is people are going to go, well, that's like NWO and the bullet club is so lame now. Yeah. Everybody's talking about them. <laughs> like, you know, uh, e- the evil swerve I, I I know we've heard it before, like, it sent shockwaves through the wrestling world. No, it literally, the evil double win was a super swerve. Nobody saw that coming, myself included. I thought it was LOL, Okada wins. Here we go. Ghetto not pushing, guys. We're sticking in the safe zone with, you know, Tanahashi or Okada or Naito. Like, these are the three you know, we're not going to venture away. We're not going to give it to Goto. We're not going to give it to Shingo. We're not going to give it to, you know, any of these other guys. Um, Switchblade was that one sort of like, whoa, like that's kind of out of their comfort zone. But I was wrong. And I admit, I admitted I was wrong. Check out the uh, Dominion review show. I did it with former co-host Dion of SOS Wrestling Network. That is your premier Puro podcast definitely check them out subscribe on youtube and subscribe uh anywhere else follow them on on twitter they're easy to find uh so yeah we cover we get into all the details about that evil win so not going to get into that here uh so again i will say i think we're going to get this like bullet club almost subset group of like three different groups and that's going to kind of carry us into Wrestle Kingdom. And we could see like a blowout happen there. So the big thing about New Japan Road today, they teased Hiromu joining Bullet Club. And he has the shirt on. And, you know, of course he goes to Naito and does, you know, the deal. And then he goes to Evil and he jumps on him and, you know, setting up the Sengoku Lord show uh, in Nagoya, which is happening this weekend, Saturday, July 25th. So it was a nice prelude to that show. I don't feel like any of the other matches got set up quite like this one, but this is their money match. So a quick preview of Sengoku Lord in uh, Nagoya. Uh, Again, takes place Saturday. New Japan World. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're a dumb dumb and you're like, well, I don't know Japanese. Well, literally, you go to the website. There's a pencil. It says Japanese. You you just boop, just click it. You click English. That's it. Now you can see what you're doing. So I don't want to hear 
those excuses from people <laughs> that go, oh, well, I, I don't know Japanese. Well, you don't need to. Just go to English, and there you go. It's just like any other website. So, as I said, Evil versus Hiromu for both the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championship. I, I, I thought they were going to just swing it to where he'll, like, Evil will defend one belt at a time, and, like, maybe that's how they branch off with the belts, and, like, I don't know how I feel yet about him just immediately like it almost like waters it down with both belts constantly being on the line. I like a little just suspense and excitement as far as like, Oh, well he's at this show, he's putting the IC belt on the line, but you know, at this show he's going to put the heavyweight on the line and you know, Oh, if he, he could lose both belts in the matter of a month, like it just adds more suspense to it in my opinion. Um, and, and again, doesn't water it down and like, hey, both belts on the line. Because it's almost like the stipulation of both belts, the likelihood of the challenger winning seems to be less likely than if it was like, oh, Evil's going to take on Hiromu for the IC belt. Oh, okay, well, man, you think Hiromu might actually beat him? It at least puts a little seed of doubt of like, yeah, maybe they'll, you know, who knows? So that's the main event. Other matches, though, Shingo Takagi taking on El Desperado for the Never Openweight title. They teased that um, at Dominion after, in my opinion, one of the – I'll say it. Takagi and Sho had the best wrestling match on the card. I know Evil, the shock of that was the big talk of the town, but as far as wrestling, like two dudes in a ring wrestling – Takaji and um and show that match was a banger that was the best wrestling match so post-match Desperado comes and teases he, he picks up the belt you know and really really set things up for this these two dudes have history this is personal this is going to be a good match a match that I didn't think was going to be after New Japan Cup especially when Okada was in the finals I did not think, you know what I think they're going to do after Okada loses the New Japan Cup? He's going to go up against the Tokyo Pimp, Yujiro Takahashi. No. If you guessed it, go play the lottery. Because you, you, <laughs> you are a Nostradamus of sorts. No one saw that coming. Hey, people can shit on it all they want. I'm glad that, again, New Japan is taking risks and trying to build new talent. I think Ghetto, and I'm not in there with Rocky Romero and Ghetto with the booking pencil, like, hey, fellas, like, but at least from what I see from my vantage point, it seems like New Japan is really trying to bank on youth. They have the um, Young Lion show that they've been producing, which I think has been awesome. It's been definitely entertaining. I believe they're on Fridays. Uh, they do the, um, the Lion Break shows. Um, beyond that though again you're seeing guys get pushed you're seeing injuries happen which you know Rapungi 2k is the reason why show is a singles guy now Tanahashi is no spring chicken and we in fact again another plug if you check out our Dominion review here myself and Dion we break that down of why they even though uh, Tanahashi and Kotobushi dropped the tag titles that they need to keep them as a tag team. And we really need to preserve Tanahashi's remaining matches. Because the last thing we want to see him is like, all due respect to one of the goats, something like The Undertaker where he has a poopy match, he's got to make up for it. And it's this like chasing the dragon sort of, you know, redemption thing with a legend who's an all-time legend. And so I think it's best that they go that route so you know it, they need to preserve their youth okada they've been to that well so many times the okada tanahashi era really is over and so we really need to bank on youth in new japan and so i think that's the direction they're going in and i'm glad that they are just riffing their safe plans up and really going boss the wall with booking there's going to be people that do do on evil and, oh, it diminishes the belt. And, oh, you know, remember they took it so seriously with all the people who held titles and, you know, give it a fucking chance. Like it's been a week 
since Dominion. Like, give it a break. Like, let's just pump our brakes and see what happens here. I like the story building with Hiromu and Evil and just LIJ to begin with. And it's certainly more intriguing than just Naito winning. Los Ingabernables de Apone throws the mic. Music hits. How much can we really go with that? Hiromu is a huge baby face now. Naito is a huge baby face now. You, you have, they, yeah, they're a tweener, like heel group, but this certainly makes the balance sort of shift to where you're like, oh, they're kind of good guys now. And there's more booking that can be done from that angle than just the same old stuff. And quite frankly, I know they have a crowd there. Uh, they have 1,200 people max. They're, they can't yell. They can't do this or that. It's like, it's such a weird time to have a babyface champion like Naito, someone that the crowd really wants to get behind during this stuff. It's almost obvious where if you really think about it, you go, oh shit, well, no wonder Evil won. Like, it makes total sense now. Evil should be the champ during this period. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I don't know what to tell you. There is uh, a couple other uh, mixed uh, sort of like tag matches, which is to be expected with New Japan uh, show Yoshihashi and Goto taking on LIJ, Naito, Bushi, and Sonata. Also have Suzuki Gun taking on the team of Tanahashi, Ibushi, Nagata, Tenzan, and Master Wado. That Master Wado is my dude, man. <laughs> I'm curious to see where they go with him, but it seems like they're really pushing this guy. Um, New Japan, man, I mean, this w- definitely was a filler show. It's like it was basically like a glorified owl show the New Japan Roadshow at Corkin, but uh, again, Saturday, July 25th, Sengoku Lord in Nagoya, that's going to be a fire show, I think, and I and we're certainly going to get more seeds planted. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what direction they head in, um, and especially for G1 coming up. Uh, G1 is going to be in October, so not in August like it usually is, but it'll be interesting. I mean, as far as New Japan goes, this is the exciting part, season. This is the you know, we're, we're at the midpoint going to the season finale, you know, on January 4th. This is the fun part. So it'll be interesting to see which direction they head in here uh, for New Japan. Slammiversary was a good show. It was a good show. I can't think of the last Impact pay-per-view, and I, I ordered Hard to Kill. I've ordered several impact pay-per-views but i can't remember the last time that i was this hyped over an impact show and of course there was the mystery of who would show up and again i know some people think that it cheapens the show itself but i had fun watching it um i went to uh, i went to cincinnati with my wife and we went to jungle gyms shout out to jungle gyms it's an international grocery store that just, it's like broken up by countries. There's just different countries and it's insane. And like, just, they have Fitz root beer from St. Louis. They have Nesbitt orange pop from Kentucky. They have all these, you know, drinks and snacks and food that you're just not going to find at your regular store. So we just made a trip out there uh, to just go get some goods. And um, I, I got to eat Raising Cane's not once, but twice, Raising Canes, if you're listening, and and also the good folks at Arcade 1UP. Those are two sponsorships that I would love to represent. I would love to be a sponsor for Raising Canes and just get a Caniac card where whenever I'm in an area, which they're not here, sadly, I can just swipe my my Raising Canes card and get some Caniacs on the house. And uh, again, shout out to the folks at Arcade 1UP. Cheap plug there. Uh, I, I don't have any more room for cabinets in here, but maybe we could start stowing them in a different room. <laughs> Anyways, got sidetracked. So went to Jungle Gyms, dr- driving back for the life of me, trying to figure out which fight account to use. Accidentally used it on my Apple account, so um, I couldn't. Um, I was having trouble watching it. And so finally got that up and running, but 
I, I would say I watched half the show on the car and then half the show, um, half, half the show at home. And again, because I hooked it up with my Apple account, I couldn't put it on the big screen. So I watched from an iPad, but still didn't deter from the show. All in all, I would say Slam Slammiversary was an eight out of 10. It was an eight out of 10 show. There was things I loved, right? There was things that just <laughs> I loved about the show. And there were some things I was like, eh, you know, maybe they could have gone this route or eh, um, done this differently. Nonetheless, though, uh, let's just get into it. Rascals took on Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. This is a team who's been kind of on again, off again as of late, who I have the utmost respect for. I've had uh, extending conversations with both Saban and Shelley uh, for obvious reasons. I'm a Detroiter. They're a Detroiter, right? What up, though? What up, though? Um, I was so hyped to see them come out. And was everyone marking out like I was? Maybe not, because I'm, I'm a bit of a homer with the Motor City Machine Guns for obvious reasons. But it was a solid opener, man. Like, in both of those teams, dude, the Rascals and Motor City Machine Guns, great chemistry together and the and, and especially getting into the latter parts of this pay-per-view dude the impact tag division is looking real strong man uh moose defeated tommy dreamer in an old school match i love that they were clowning the the ray and seth eye for an eye match with the thumbtack spot where moose was like literally pushing his face down and tommy's like ah and yeah it would have been executed a little better had they had fans um but honestly though and and this, uh, just a quick aside they don't have fans they're not doing the aw technique of um you know, the wrestlers who aren't on the show, like around ringside for noise and, you know, people's family or friends or whomever they're planning in the Daily's Place for AEW, there was just no fans. It was just Josh Matthews and Don Callis and wrestlers. But it didn't, the, the presentation came off great. Like visually, it looked good. It didn't look rinky-dink. Uh, Josh Matthews, a lot of people like to shit on him. It's easy to say when you're not in that position, you don't do that job. You may favor other people, but to say that he sucks, I don't think that he sucks at all. Um, so I don't get the hate on the impact commentary. That's just me, though. But, yeah, the, um, the crowd stuff didn't take away from the show at all, and I don't think it does at all with impact. Just the way that they present the product, I think it looks great. Kylie Ray won the knockout uh, for the gold gauntlet match. This, uh, I, I had already kind of joked about this at the top of the show, but having the person on Twitter say, oh, well, I didn't like the fact that none of the knockouts in this gauntlet were attractive. And it was a woman. And uh, it's like, like I said, this isn't a beauty pageant. It's wrestling. Oh, well what point are you making like again do we want to go back to the divas era <laughs> and just have shit swimsuit model wrestling matches if you want to call them wrestling matches or do you want to have uh wrestling right and to to shit on people like kimberly or kylie ray or havoc people who are entertaining and that uh are important as far as the knockout vision division is concerned. Um, I, I just thought it was just a crass comment and, I, and very rare do I like pick fights on social media. And I, and I, Deb, you're not going to see, if you follow me on social media, you're not going to see me in some wild thread, like, Oh, look at him getting into it with no, like there might be a one or two kind of back and forth, like a rebuttal and then a final statement. I'll let you get the last word. I have no interest in arguing. And, and just like I said uh, to the girl on Twitter, it was like, I cannot argue with your opinion. Like it's your opinion. There's, I can't, how do I argue with it? You think none of them are attractive and that deterred you from the match. Was it a five-star match? No. Is, has any battle royal ever been a five-star match? No. So not sure what the fuck you were expecting by this gauntlet match. You thought they were going to be fucking like Spice Channel 
chicks in the ring, and like doing fucking sentons and like 450. Like, what were you, <laughs> what were you expecting, dude? Really? What were you expecting from this gauntlet match? All right, cool. I digress. So Kylie Ray ends up being the victor out of the knockouts for the gold gauntlet match. So Kylie Ray will challenge for the Impact uh, Knockouts Championship. We'll get to who the champion will be in that match here soon enough. After this, Heath Slater debuted, and I guess he went by Heath. Um, kind of a kind of a weird spot, and it just felt weird. And especially this is the only time we're not having a crowd. Just felt kind of like Ugh, this is kind of awkward. He was cutting this, hey, like, I'm glad to be here. Like, it would have been so much better if there was a crowd. People would have popped for him. You know, he would have had that momentum coming into it to cut that promo. It didn't, it didn't, it just didn't work. And uh, at least in my opinion, it was just kind of awkward and weird. But it was so cool to see him. Dude, he got jacked. Like, he looks great. He looks like a million bucks. Um during the course of the pay-per-view though they teased they had Heath Slater uh, and Rhino which Rhino has alluded to him being a, a buddy that's coming to Impact who has kids um so they've already teased it but it looks like we're going to get a Heath Slater Rhino tag team in Impact so again the point that I brought up a couple moments ago dude it just they keep stacking the tag teams throughout this pay-per-view you just keep seeing the the tag division in Impact especially which to me I'm a big tag team wrestling fan and so there are certain companies that piss me off and i know what you're thinking it's just wwe trust me new japan has been just kind of throwing shit at the wall to see if it sticks in the tag division for several years now especially when it comes to the junior have uh junior heavy uh tag team division so don't get on me about just harping on wwe because no rose color glasses here player my, my glasses are all dark tint um, I just, they keep just replenishing this tag division to the point where, I mean, it's rivaling AEW, I think, right now for best tag team in the world, best tag team division. What do you guys think? What do you girls think? What do you folks think at the letter KFEB connection? Who has the best tag team division in the world as far as wrestling companies go? Um, I'm going to post that on Instagram too. So if you haven't followed Instagram's, uh the kfabe connections instagram uh page follow that i'll post that on there as well and hell i'll even post it here um for the comment section on youtube but i really want to know what everyone thinks as far as that debate goes who is the who has the best tag team division right now in wrestling so uh x division championship match a very awesome championship match chris bay defeated willie mack and I love that Chris Bay kind of called his spot like Babe Ruth style with his finisher before this match took place. And Willie Mack made him look like a million bucks. Uh, we saw stunners and his six star uh, frog splash not work. And that just made Chris Bay just look like an even bigger star. So Willie Mack was awesome as usual. He, he, Honestly, when I got heavy into indie wrestling back in like 2012, 2013, Willie Mack was the first person on my radar. Where I'm like, whoa, who's this guy? This guy's awesome. Um, I, I remember wanting to get that Mac Daddy shirt that he had, like the Sugar Babies knockoff of the candy. Uh, Willie Mack's just so dope. He's so fucking awesome and just athletic. And you see him and you're just thinking like, oh, he's a bigger dude and he's just going to do the typical stuff. No, man, he, he he's balls to the wall and doesn't like zero to a hundred doesn't, uh, doesn't stop. He's just, he, he go, 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 go in the ring. And he's so much fun to watch. I can't tell you a whack Willie Mac match. And he did some Lucha Underground stuff, so, <laughs> right, <laughs> Lucha Underground, uh, shout out to my boy Shaggy in Austin, Texas, he, this morning, he's like, I miss uh, Lucha Underground, to which I replied, I miss season one and season two of Lucha Underground, <laughs> I had to clarify, but anyways, uh, getting back to Impact, Chris Bay is your new X Division champion, he is one of those uh rising stars 
uh, in all of wrestling, I think. And I say give it a couple years, and Chris Bay is going to be talked about uh, in wrestling circles as being one of the best. And I, I have that that kind of faith in him. I think he's just a tremendous wrestler. And uh, sky's the limit for him. So congrats to him. The North defeated Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamer for the Tag Team Championships. This match definitely fell flat for me. Um, I love, absolutely love the North. And it's not their fault. It's like, how much can you really do? Like, Sam, and Sammy, too. Sammy Callahan is one of the more consistent wrestlers on the planet. Bar none, period. I watched that dude at a WrestleMania weekend a couple of years ago do, what, six matches in one weekend. It was insane. And all of them were awesome. So shout out to Sammy Callahan. Shout out to Josh Alexander. Shout out to all of them. I mean, everybody. Shamrock, like, look. Does he look incredible? Is he just jacked to shit? Yeah, he's yoked. But man, that weird like spot where he tried to jump out of the ring and he like kind of fell. Like I'm sure that's gonna be on the next episode of Botchmania. Like nobody was even there. It was like, what was he doing? Like who was he trying to hit? Uh, it was just weird, and it was just kind of weird pacing. It was cool when Josh um, and Ken Shamrock both had the ankle lock in i thought that was a cool little nod and uh, i thought that was a cool spot just as a wrestling match it was just like man you kind of shamrock kind of he was i don't want to say kind of he was the weak link in the match it was just hard to control the pacing when you have someone of his age and where he's at kind of athletically again he looks like a million bucks but from a wrestling standpoint oof it's kind of rough like really getting exposed being in the ring with three people like ethan page josh alexander and sammy who can fucking go all three of those guys are just wrestling studs it's really hard to to control that pacing and to not stick out like a sore thumb when three out of the four can go and the one is just like hey look at my muscles like kind of difficult so that one was just and eh, that was it was okay it was what it was but after the match um and this is where i thought that the good brothers were gonna come they did a nice little swerve here um they had uh motor city machine guns come out after the match because of course the north was on the mic nobody's talked about us we've had this whole year long rain and nobody's talked about us and you know we've gone through every tag team in the division right there i'm like okay cue the good Bro brothers but no swerved us again and they did a little swerves with like johnny bravo and stuff through the whole night to where you're just waiting like man when and, and i thought they did a good job of that it really made me like well fuck when are they gonna debut well shit they're gonna come out after the the championship match it seems like well no well maybe it's gonna be after the the impact heavyweight championship match and and they did so kudos to them for really making us like salivate over this good brothers debut but uh, Motor City Machine Guns came out and challenged the North, so it appears that it's going to be the North and versus the Motor City Machine Guns on uh, Impact this week. Uh, tomorrow, in fact, Tuesday, so check your local listings and check that out. That is going to be a guaranteed banger match. Guaranteed. I will be watching along with, hopefully, all of you. Next uh, match was the uh, co-main event for the Impact Knockouts Championship. Jordan Grace taking on newly released, newly acquired Deanna Parasso. This match was fucking awesome. Top to bottom, De both Deanna and Jordan, salute to you. It was an awesome match. And it it's just like, they they both can go and they're um you can't you can't label them like oh they're a technical or they're a high flight like they just they're good wrestlers that's it like there's no little like label to put either of these two women in and man knockouts division has low-key been a consistent women's division that just I, in my opinion i'll say it doesn't get the credit it deserves because they've they've been consistent for up teen years 
on the women's rest roster and shout out to Gil Kim, the goat, uh, who I'm not, she didn't carry the division because there were several other workers there killing it with her and still are in this company. I think this was a time to shine because I know a lot of people are talking about the Sasha um, Asuka match from Extreme Rules from last night, which, oof, I saw a little clip of the finish. It's like, what the fuck? Like, so you take this awesome match and you just ran, like, here, Bailey, here's a shirt. In the mist, fuck finish with Asuka. It was just like, ugh. So just cheapen your, your match with some hokey. WWE, Three Stooges shit. Like, that that's what I dug about this match for anybody that wants to debate Saturday night's women's championship match versus Sunday's you didn't have some kind of stupid fuck finish and this was something this claim was made about Heath and it was also made um in response to Deanna Parasso oh look at these WWE jobbers now in title matches and in main you know storylines like Oh, look how lame Impact is. I will issue you the same question that I tweeted out at the letter K, F-A-B-E connection on Twitter. Do you think most people that tuned in to Slammiversary give a flying fuck about who Deanna Parasu lost to in NXT? Do you think... <laughs> That most people who turned into slam tuned into Slam Anniversary give a fuck about Heath Slater being in three MB and oh he he lost to Vader and Lita and all these Psycho Sid back in the day he sucks he barely won a match in one man band. No, if anything, I think it's the opposite. I think it's people excited who get behind these workers like a Diana Perazzo. Or a Heath Slater. People that are good wrestlers who are entertaining. Heath is entertaining as hell. He's hilarious. Deanna Parazzo is a great women's wrestler. And proofs in the pudding, she's the Impact Knockouts champion. She won via, it was like a double arm bar sort of submission. Um, both women looked great. Both looked strong coming out of this. And... I'm super excited about a Kylie Ray Deanna Perazzo championship match. That feud's going to be great. Uh, you still got Taya. Uh, you still got Jordan. You still got several women on that roster who can, who, in my opinion, can go. They might not be attractive, according to you know the girl on Twitter, but cool. I'm not watching the fucking Victoria's Secret show. I'm watching wrestling. And beauty is in the eye of the holder as well. So that goes without saying. Main event for the Impact Heavyweight Championship ended up being a five-way. They teased it as being a four-way. There was going to be a mystery um, opponent. It turned out to be Rich Swan, who came out and was like doing the <laughs> beat it <laughs> Michael Jackson dance, threw his crutches down. I thought that was cool. Rich Swan has always been entertaining always been charismatic and has always put on fun matches you're not gonna watch a match of his and go man that was boring i i'm i'm happy that he got into the mix but he wasn't the only surprise we saw music hit we had a dude with it like a looking like a jason looking mask pulls it off it's none other than eric young former sanity member Former jobber, according to all the wrestling experts and wrestling journalists, Eric Young proved in this five-way for the heavyweight championship, he can still go. I know after Sanity fizzled out, he was kind of working as a producer for, I think, for NXT. Uh, I'm so glad he's back in Impact. And for people that weren't TNA Impact fans, was this like a you know, oh my God moment. If you were one of those casuals on Twitter, like, hey, should I order Slammiversary? Which Slammiversary trended number one on Twitter for most of the show. For three hours, it was trending number one with all the fucked up stuff that's happening in the world right now. <laughs> and 
all the running jokes about impact oh they're they're gonna fold their business they're gonna you know sell their rights to wwe they're just gonna you know it's gonna be done and over with impact's dead tna is dead how can they even afford their employees how can they even pay their roster oh blah 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 number one trending thing on twitter during the pay-per-view so and and a thing too there was so much positive feedback like i didn't see a lot of impact hate like you normally do oh who gives a shit when people do the delete delete and it's like oh i thought you didn't watch impact and like oh aj styles the phenomenal one oh i thought you didn't watch impact like samoa joe we could go on and on about that but yeah uh eddie edwards eric young ace austin trey and rich swan main event was awesome everybody was crisp on the money sharp everybody like it, it was an awesome main event again as a as a day one impact fan it was so cool to see eric young and as a longtime wrestling fan it was great to see who came out as champ it came down to eddie edwards and ace austin who ace austin man their his potential there's no telling what what links he's going to get to with with the potential that he has as a wrestler ace austin is another chris bay type that just like i got the nba jam next to me he's on fire like he's an nba jam type wrestler he can go incredible and he'll get his time to shine he'll get his moment but it was eddie edwards night and as an ROH fan, as a Wolves fan, as just all things considered as a wrestling fan, it was super cool to see Eddie Edwards get his moment. Um, it was short-lived, though. We had uh, Madman Fulton hit him from behind and kind of stomp him out, and then we heard theme music, and it was like, here it is. The Good Brothers debuted to close out Impact, and they did the full Austin treatment with the beer. They came off like superstars in this. Again, the Heath thing was kind of weird. Some things hit, some things missed. The Good Brothers debuted, the way that they teased it all through the night, you know, the Mercedes coming up, and uh, Johnny Bravo saying, oh, I went to the rental car company, and they said it was for... Uh, for a guy named Anderson, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, they just kept teasing the Good Brothers, and I thought they swerved you good enough where you thought they were going to be the tag team at the top of the show. You thought they were going to come out and interrupt the North, and they were like, oh, we've run through every tag team. I just thought that the Good Brothers debut was so well done. Um, so, yeah, they just they came up looking like a million bucks. They got new – merch they get they of course they got a new theme song kind of like outlaw country like wild wild west like oh shit mess with the wrong guys like that's kind of the vibe i got from their theme um and yeah they came in the ring drink beers with eddie edwards celebrated with them and the show ends but we don't just fade to black and it's like thanks for watching beep boop 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 you know the music hits the weather channel type music we get a promo and we see the three and you're like oh shit Dude with the hoodie takes the hoodie off, has a drink in his hand, throws the drink at the three that's illuminated on the wall. It's none other than EC3. It looks like he's going to take on this sort of like psycho role, like just this aggressive sort of like loose cannon type role. He's definitely not doing the Dixie Carter game. Trouble, trouble, trouble. We're not seeing that shit on this run. He's going to totally reinvent himself with this role. And man, I can't wait till tomorrow for Tuesday for Impact to – to happen and to see where they go with this character who he's going to go after it definitely looks like we're going to get a rich swan eric young feud coming out of this and they both worked so well together i can't wait who knows who eddie uh, edwards is going to uh, feud with I, it, I mean the way that the match ended they're kind of alluding to that as well so all in all i just feel that impact slam anniversary <laughs> this is so fucking cheesy and, and lame forgive me made an impact fight for the fallen took place last wednesday on dynamite 
again, much the same as Fighter Fest. I'm glad that they're putting on these shows uh, where it's not pay-per-view, you know, and it's 50 bucks and so on and so forth. I'm glad that they're picking their spots, so to speak, when it comes to um, their major pay-per-views and offering them for a fee. All Out uh, is in September, early September. I believe the 4th, September 4th. Could be mistaken. It's either 4th or the 5th. Um, I'm going to get to where, based on the ending of uh, Fight for the Fallen, where I kind of think the direction is heading in from last week's event to the next big pay-per-view. So without further ado, first match on Fight for the Fallen was a TNT championship match, and it was Cody taking on a Sunny Kiss challenger who in this role Sonny was aggressive and so was Cody too it was that they both were just at each other's throats like they were both aggressive firing on all cylinders Cody definitely was embracing his heel role much the same as uh another elite member we'll get to that in a moment but um Sonny tried to hit uh the 450 and X's and O's only got a two count. Uh, Cody ends up winning with the crossroads. Um, he teased the exposed turnbuckle like he was going to heal it up and use it. He didn't end up doing it. And again, crossroads for the win. So kind of flickers here and there of some heel stuff. Uh, he hugged Sonny at the end and was like, hey, you know, giving Sonny the flowers <laughs> that Sonny rightfully deserves. Sonny Kiss hasn't had much time on TV. And I saw people hating on Twitter. And I hate to be that person that's like, you're only hating on Sonny because. But come on, man. Like, super athletic, uh, entertaining, um, charismatic. Give Sonny, uh, give Sonny the flowers, as we like to say. I think it's bullshit that here we are and immediately and especially with wrestling fans not all but you kind of expect it from some let's face it some wrestling fans just aren't <laughs> deemed as rocket scientists and it's just kind of annoying that in this day of age you still got to deal with that hate and divisiveness when it comes to a character who just it just if it's not your cup of tea it's not your cup of tea but some of the comments and stuff that i saw i was just like ugh. but yeah awesome match between the two uh sunny and cody both look great and i thought it was a good match it was a good opener next match was ftr taking on the lucha bros dude i mean this is as evenly matched as you could get each team basically had an answer for one another trying to outdo one another um, but ultimately it was Dax who defeated Phoenix by, um, you know, attempting to unmask Phoenix and then, uh, rolling Phoenix up into a small package. So, uh, FTR rolling in AW, um, definitely on a hot streak after the match, the Bucks help FTR get their truck back. So they have the keys and the truck and give them their keys back. And then Kenny Omega comes down with a cooler, offers them some beer but they dumped the beer on his head. And I mean, to be honest, to their credit, it was Miller Lite. <laughs> so, like, I don't blame him for dumping Miller Lite. Like, what do you do? But, you know, Kenny's not an experienced drinker. He He's pretty, pretty much straight edge. So uh, it's hard to tell him, hey, that shit beer, don't, don't buy it. Like, they probably won't like it, you know, but beer's beer. Um, but yeah uh we're definitely seeing some turns and stuff there um the writing's on the mall and it's just a matter of when and i'll get to that after the sh the breakdown of of fight for the fallen but it's only a matter of time when they pull the trigger on the four horsemen uh revival and i think i know where uh they're gonna do it uh next we got the jericho uh promo the demo god promo which is fucking hilarious they have a demo god shirt that they're selling on awshop.com uh i love how much it triggers people especially like the wwe apologists so funny man they get so worked up about it um 
basically in this segment, I mean, <clears throat> it was effective for what it needed to be. But for me, the Orange Cassidy dropping the orange juice all over the inner circle, it, it just reminded me too much of like cheesy DX interactions with the McMahons. I don't know. Um, I've seen it a couple times. It didn't bother me as much the second time. It was just like, eh, okay. it, was, it was okay, you know. Um, I definitely see Jericho and Orange Cassidy having a match uh, down the road here in the next few weeks. And with that being said, I think we're going to get an Orange Cassidy win finally over Jericho. And I'll tell you why once we get to the end of this breakdown here. Next match, you already knew it was going to be good. Elite taking on Jurassic Express. What can I say? It was a fun match. I love that they were they they trolled so hard in the new being the elite episode. Definitely check out the new BTE episode from this week. They trolled with Gallows and Anderson. They trolled about the 50 plus demo that NXT consistently beats them. Well, is the only thing they beat them with other than overall viewers like four times. Um they just and and they did they did a dig on people shitting on the Canadian destroyer spot. Here's my thing on that. And this was one of those rare moments where I had to offer a rebuttal on Twitter. Dude, the Canadian destroyer is not overdone in wrestling. You know the thing that is overdone in wrestling? Tope su suicidas. If I never have to see a tope suicida spot, I will be the happiest wrestling fan ever. You know what? Also, I would love to get rid of what? Get rid of getting rid of the what chant. You know what else I would like to get rid of? And especially once live audiences come back. Dude, the slow clap. Dude, Evolve, which no longer exists thanks to the, the biggest, greatest company ever that loves wrestling so much, they just mm, come here, all mine. Uh at Evolve, dude, they are the slow clappiest slow clap group ever. Like, there was one match, I'm not shitting you, and I forget what it was. Dude, no joke, within the first minute, there was a slow clap. A minute? Come on, dude. So, not to belabor the point, you get where I'm going with this. There are way more fucking annoying things in wrestling that are super, super washed, super repetitive. And it ain't the Canadian Destroyer. Just because you've seen it with Phoenix or Nick Jackson or whomever for two to three weeks in a row does not make the move something. Oh, God. We're going to get a Canadian Destroyer in every match? Oh, Canadian Destroyer is like the DDT now. Dude, like, go, go make a bowl of cereal or something and chill. Relax. Canadian Destroyer is fine. That move is totally fine. Chill. We got an ext uh, extinction event spot, which was pretty dope by Jurassic Express. We got Omega with the heelish move of hitting a one wing angel on Marco and then getting the win, but then just putting a beat down on Marco. Um, I've already went on a rant about Omega and I don't need to again. But still, it's so funny the people that are like, oh, he was so much better in New Japan. He sucks in the States. It's like, dude, I can't wait for this heel Kenny Omega gimmick to drop. Because I think this has just been a slow burn for an eventual like world title run. And I think MJF is being groomed for one. I think Kenny's going to be groomed as one as a heel. And I could definitely uh, see Hangman being one as a baby face. So, um, that that remains to be seen. We'll get more into that as 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 I said. I, I got some predictions I'd like to make about where we're heading with AEW. Nightmare Sisters match. They beat you know two dark uh, jobber. I, I guess you want to call them job. I, I I don't like using that term like enhancement talent. Um, it was what it was. It's like they're this odd couple. Like it's a buddy cop movie with a tag team with women and. 
they're the odd couple and they don't get along, but they get along to win. It's like, okay, we got it. You know, it was what it was. Uh, same thing with the next uh, segment, Vicky Guerrero being named as Nyla Rose's manager. Is it bad for me to say it's kind of lame, just kind of underwhelming. I was just like, and you know, in my mind, I'm like, Oh dude, they could do like fucking Medusa or like, you know, I thought of like three or four names that like, oh, I could legitimately see in the, see this happening. And hell, even Melina, I know she's with NWA, so it's kind of hard, but didn't know like what her contract was. But you get it, like just something, something different and fresh. And I know she's such a great heel because she's so annoying, but it's just a weird fit. Um We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it'll it'll be better when there's a crowd because, like, excuse me, dude. Even her theme is like, excuse me, boom, like it's like worked into the beat. It's like what the fuck? So annoying and so cringe, but it works for her. So I think this will be over more once there's a crowd to feed off of. Otherwise, it's just you're just at home. Like, make her shut up. That's what my wife says. Make her shut up. Ew turn the volume down i hate her voice you know she's being a good heel but again it'll it'll play out much better with a crowd last but not least we got the aw championship match between john moxley and the machine brian cage mox right out the gate goes for the arm goes for the newly repaired arm of cage i thought from a storytelling standpoint this was beautifully done because even though Mox was going after Cage and Cage seemed vulnerable in that regard, he still overpowered Moxley. Uh, but Mox was smart enough to keep working on the arm. So it's like those two little things playing into each other, I think, worked for this, uh, for this match. Mox was just relentless, man, working on this dude's arm. We get a paradigm shift. Cage kicks out at two. Again, relentless. Mox keeps going after that arm. We get an arm bar variant for the finish uh, as we saw Taz throw in the towel. Throw the damn towel, right? Shout out to Rocky. Man, here's my thing on this. I think, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to say hindsight is dot, dot, dot. I'm not even going to say the year because this year is garbage. What I will say is I think rewinding and doing that over, it would have made more of uh, an impact had Taz thrown the towel in this match. And then this week on Dynamite, he comes out and goes, you know what? Don't worry about that. You're going to have plenty of opportunities for the AEW championship. Speaking of championships, I got something for you. Pull the bag out. It's the fuck the world champ FTW. It would have made more sense to present Cage with the FTW title post-defeat. Like, uh, and that would have been Dynamite this week, Wednesday. It just would have made more sense. To me now, it's just like, well, he doesn't need a title because he has this made-up title. And it's cool to us wrestling fans, but, like, I just think from a factor of, like, really – uh, adding weight to that title and for storyline purposes, not have him come in with a belt. Like it's, it makes more sense of like, it's a consolation prize, but in, in actuality, like he, he's not worried about it to the point where it's like, I got to keep chasing. Yeah. He's going to keep chasing after the belt, but he's still a champ in his own right. Right. So I don't know. I thought it would just been, it would have been better that way had they pulled that off still it's not enough for me to nitpick and be like oh the whole angle's ruined and oh and dumb and no we're not gonna nitpick here it's just being vocal about things that were like oh yeah that was cool or eh, i wish they would have done it that way but eh, it's okay so be it it's just kind of just being vocal about things you liked and, and disliked but overall uh, this was a this was a great show. Another entertaining week of dynamite. It definitely felt above average. Um, oh, and last but not least, uh, so after the match, Mox retains. Cage jumps Mox, and pe you know pegs him with the FTW title, and then the lights go out, and then we hear Darby Allen's music. Darby Allen returns 
to dynamite and he's been out long enough to get a dope uh sleeve done it's like a like an x-ray skull down even down to his hands his hands got the freaking what are they the phalanges uh tattooed so he's got this cool new tattoo but yeah they've been doing spots to really sell darby being out of action with taz from double or nothing uh here's what i'm saying and, and we'll get to this last bit of the show here before i sign off here um all out again is coming up in september here's how i think things will shake out and if if this is true and that's the thing that sucks about doing this super booker you know armchair booking is if it doesn't happen the way you want it then you're let down you're upset but i don't know it's fun to like speculate on where we think they're going anyways here we go i think we're definitely getting a triple threat between john moxley brian cage and darby allen it'll be a triple threat for the aw title at all out can they drag this out for what less than two months like a month and a half sure i think so so yeah i think the aw heavyweight championship will be between mox cage and darby and a triple threat another thing i see happening and i alluded it alluded to it uh, a few moments ago I can definitely see Orange Cassidy picking up a win over Jericho in the next coming weeks, maybe two to three weeks on Dynamite. The only reason, though, it'll be via interference from Mike Tyson. I think we're going to get Mike Tyson again in the mix. It's a legitimate enough run-in and a reason for Orange Cassidy to get a win over Jericho. But nonetheless, that just catapults him even further to get that one, two, three. I wish there was a crowd to get that pop. There'll, there'll still be people on the roster who will cheer, and it'll be cool. It'll still be somewhat of a moment, but um, I think uh, Orange Cassidy's going to go over on Jericho with interference from Tyson. And what I think will happen is I think we're going to get Mike Tyson versus Chris Jericho probably in a street fight because, let's face it, Mike Tyson's not going to be in a wrestling match. So we're probably going to get some type of like funny, like not cinematic, but like they're going to do some sort of funny street fight thing uh, between Mike Tyson and Chris Jericho. And hell, we might even see Orange Cassidy as the rep. You could do all kinds of funny spots. I think we're going to get a Tyson-Jericho match with Orange Cassidy as the rep. Another match that I think is going to be a super showcase match is going to be a, a heel Kenny Omega taking on a babyface Hangman Page. I think we're going to get that match um, at All Out. And the stakes will be high. I, I don't know who Omega and Hangman will lose the titles to. Um, I think it very well could be FTR, but who knows? I mean, there's so many great teams. Lucha Bros, Bucks are well overdue. I'm shocked they haven't got the belts this soon. Uh, so kudos to them for shutting up all the dorks on Twitter. They, they All they do is put themselves over. They have such a great stacked tag team division. It'll be interesting to see Private Party, uh, even hell, even Dark Order. It'll be interesting to see, I think from a storyline standpoint, I think FTR makes sense because last but not least, what I think will happen, and I think this will form at All Out, I think we're going to see the the Four Horsemen revival, uh, pun intended, uh, go down at All Out. I think that's where we get the fi- the, the big payoff um, with Cody, heel Cody, heel FTR, and Sean Spears, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson. They are the new Four Horsemen. I think it's going to culminate, and we're going to see that play out at All Out. So – definitely can see Cody because Cody they keep milking Cody like even though he's showing heel tendencies and it kind of flickers of heelish behavior in his matches he'll still at the end of the match hug the person raise their hand hey give them their props I think we're gonna and I don't know who just yet I'm not speculating yet on who I think Cody will face at all out but it, I think it'll certainly appear to be like a face versus face feud not like a full-blown bad guy is facing and again it's going to be one of those give him his flowers moment like hey root for the guy he had a valiant effort hit him with the crossroads and throw up the four and then here comes into the ring they're all going to beat the person down 
and it's just one after another. You're going to get Tully with Sean Spears. You're going to get Arn. You're going to get uh, FTR. So I, I think we're going to see the four horsemen form at all out. And just those four things on paper, we haven't even mentioned the Bucks, Lucha Bros, uh, MJF. There's all types of people. Jurassic Express, there's all Wardlow. There's so many. The roster is stacked right now. But those are your big four selling points. Dude, All Out could shape up to be a, a, like a, a huge, the biggest show of the year, which it usually is. It sucks because I've um, been to All In and All Out. I was hoping that I could make it happen again this year for obvious reasons. It's not looking like we're going to get live wrestling for AEW anytime soon. So it will definitely emanate from Daly's place in Jacksonville. But um, yeah, I think good things are on the horizon for AEW. Hell, wrestling in general, dude. I mean, it's so easy to dump on the swamp match and the eyeball match and notice how little was paid attention to that or speculating or just even shitting on WWE. Wrestling as a whole, as a whole, as a collective right now, is so awesome and entertaining. And we can sit here and we can fixate on one company and constantly bash them. It's like I'm recording this on a Monday. Again, and I've said this before, it used to be just hardwired into my brain. Mondays are for wrestling. Now, Mondays, I record my podcast. Sometimes I just game in the arcade in the Mankind Cave. Um, Wednesdays are wrestling night. Wednesdays, I get wings and pizza. Make sure the lawn's mowed. Make sure my work's done. Make sure everything's good because 8 Eastern time, it's wrestling night. Wrestling is fine right now. New Japan shocked everybody. It got us all talking. It's so unpredictable right now. Impact, their roster just went from very little. And you look at a company, and especially like Slammiversary, they made an example of doing the most with the least. And after the fact, EC3's back, Eric Young's back, Rich Swan's healthy. Uh, we got Motor City Machine Guns in the tag division. Good Brothers are in the tag division. I mean, Rhino and Heath are going to be a tag team. I think they'll kill it. Dude, wrestling is awesome right now. So I'm not trying to be the kumbaya, my lord guy, but it's a lost cause with that company. And you know what I'm talking about. There's so many good things about wrestling right now. I wish NWA was back. It'd be interesting to see how ROH would shake out. Um, but between Impact, New Japan, and AEW, we're good. We are good right now. Tuesdays for Impact, Wednesdays for AEW, and then just across the board for, you know, random New Japan shows. Uh, that's really, that's what, that's all I got. We're leaving it on that. We're leaving it on a high note tonight. At the letter K, FAB Connection on Twitter. Follow KFAB Connection, all one word, on Instagram. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. You want a wrestling podcast that talks about all wrestling, not just one company. KFAB Connection. Hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, that's it for another episode of KFAB Connection. Next time someone tells you wrestling's fake, you know you tell them, so are movies and TV.